What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, what I have here is the, the G Power Twister Creek X and, or X Creek, whatever it is. I know it looks kind of like a banjo, but it's not a banjo. It's an actual kayak paddle. I'm going to show you guys here real quick what this paddle looks like. I've been using this paddle for in a lot of my videos and I get a lot of questions about it. So I figured I'd do a quick review. I've been putting it through its paces over maybe, I don't know, the past month. I took it to Colorado, ran it down a lot of different creeks. Get this bag out, by the way. This thing is nice. Comes with this nice bright green color right here. G Power, really, really well made bag. This is one of the best made bags. It's got this material, so it's got this nice cushiony material. Highly recommend the bag if you get one of these paddles, but here we go. Take a look at it. It is all scratched up. I'll set the bag aside right. I'll let you look at the blade shape here real quick. And check out this blade shape. So this blade shape has very wide down here with a lot of power like from here to here. And it's got this separation here so it has zero flutter going through the water. This actually helps separate the, the blade, separate it. One thing it does not like, it does one thing, it, it's very rounded right here and it hates being loaded on that backside. Very light, but wow is this thing stiff. One thing you'll notice, it is so stiff, it has zero flex to it. So this thing has zero flex to the blade. X Creek means, what this means is for the, I um, actually reached out to G Power and what they told me was they're using an extra layer of um, unidirectional carbon fiber on the back, on the non-power face, and there's carbon um, Kevlar lined on the inside. It does sound kind of hollow. They said it had foam in it, but that does not feel foam. It has a hollow. I was told it has carbon fiber ribs in it. This thing is not the most grippiest thing, so I did do my little tape thing right there and have some extra tape on there. It does have an embossed serial number. I don't know, you can see mine here in the camera. That is a large, so I have the large blade, which is a very wide blade. You know, stick around because I'll get into the specs here in a minute for you guys. It does have a lot of customization. You can customize your blade. You don't have to go, I love this color on this blade, by the way. That looks so cool. I really like the looks of this blade. It's a very well made, the craftsmanship is absolutely amazing on this blade. Just like with the Letman paddles, they have done such a great job on this paddle. But one thing you're going to notice that's real different on this one is, that is, if you can see it, that is stainless steel. Check that out if you can see it in the camera. That is steel. That is not, they don't use Dynel, they use a type of steel on the edging right there. So starting right here, going all the way around, is stainless steel edging. How cool is that? I have never seen that. That is, and one thing you want to do, you want to watch your buddies if you're getting in a play hole together. I would hate to scrape that across somebody's face or arm. Oh boy, would that hurt. You need to be careful with um, chalking your blades on people if you're using one of these. So it is not, a, but I have been using this for about a month and a half, almost two months. Look how well this thing is held up. Wow, and I have not been easy on it. I had it in Colorado, had it in a lot of different other spots. I was not on like the most like big water runs. I was on a few big water runs, but this thing hates rocks. It does not, I'm not gonna bang it on itself. It cannot stand to touch rocks, and boy, it lets you know when you do. When you hit a rock, it'll let you know real bad. So if you're a beater and you like to bang your paddle into rocks a lot, this might not be the paddle for you. Go with a Warner, go with a Select, go with an Ophion. There are other options out there. I would not probably go with this one, because this one will let you know when you screw up and make a bad line. And as I was showing you last time, it does have the Ford crank design. I love the Ford crank. It puts the blade in front of the hand like a lot, like just like with the Letman. It has the Ford crank. This is not a natural bent shaft that's on the Warners. You can see how the when you're holding with the Warner, look at the blade relation to the back of the hand where you look at the blade on this one when I'm holding the select paddle, look at where the blade is in relation to where my hand is. So my hand's right there. Look at where the blade is. Right here, look where the blade is. You can see the blade is on a bent shaft warner is right in level with your hand. So this is called a Ford crank for everyone that doesn't know. Highly recommend. Once you get used to using a Ford crank, you'll never want to go back to a normal bent shaft. But it, it does it does have a little bit of a learning curve, so I get it for a lot of you guys out there that want to use these. It does have a little bit of a learning curve on your draws and on your pulls. They do have a play blade 
uh, called the Harpoon. So there is a play blade available if you guys want to go with that. But I've just been using this one right here, and it has been absolutely amazing. The specs on the large, so 730. They claim that the power, the paddle weight, it's a very, very light paddle, and they claim the weight on this thing is 880 grams. But when I weighed this one, it was around about 11. It was probably about 1,090 because mine is a two-piece. Maybe the 880 is a one-piece non like take apart. So this one's a two-piece take apart. So having that ferrule and that in there probably added that extra weight. But even then, it's an extremely light blade for for what it is. Adjustment, so if you do go, mine's a 200, so it's a 200 adjustment that goes from 200 to a 210. And one thing I did notice, it's almost impossible to see the writing on there. So what I did, I got a little marker and I marked where my indexing point was. I wish G-Power had a better indexing because they don't have a good indexing right there. But you can barely see, I don't even know if you can see it in the camera. There is a number here that goes from 1 to 10 that'll get let you know. You can go from 0 and I think it goes up to 80. Yeah, and this one is like a composite plastic mix, if you can see it right there. And at first, I thought it was going to be, it feels flimsy. I was like, no way that thing's going to, wow, has this thing done really well. I'm so impressed on how well this thing's held up. Let me go ahead and put it together for you guys. I get it like that, and the best way to do it is, let me get my right hand over here. Get it like that right there, and just keep spinning it like that. You want it tight. I basically will get, and I go usually right there. You can see I'll go between 40, like 40 and 50. So I'm probably at 45 degree. I go 45 degree, 200 offset. And that's what I go with when I use this paddle. And see how well that goes together. And it does not twist. I'm twisting this as hard as I can. And I cannot get it to twist, even when it's wet. The biggest problem I have is taking the damn thing back apart. After it gets wet, and it, oh, if it's cold out there, you need help getting this thing apart. It's so damn tough to get apart. So you go like that. I'm at 200, and let's say I'm doing creaking, kind of downriver, shallow creaking, I'll go 200. If I'm in my long boat, I'll go like a 205. What, having a two-piece take apart, just like with the Letman, I thought that would be a terrible idea. But what I love about this, when we're running shuttle, I'll stick this down inside my kayak. How many of you guys, you guys leave in the comments below if you or any of your buddies have had a paddle broken by some moron piling boats in the back of a truck. I've watched people throw their paddles in the back of the truck, then a bunch of people start piling kayaks on it, and I've seen blades and or paddles get broken in half from that. You have a two-piece take apart, you'll never have to worry about that, because you know what you do? You stick it down inside your kayak, and you're good to go. I'll always do that. It's super easy to stick this down in the bow and let it set, then run your shuttle. Or grab it and set it up front with you, because it's so small, you can just like put it under your arm like this, and carry it with you or put it in the bag and then throw the bag in the back of the, the boat. So an advantage on that. There's a guy here in the U.S. that's importing these. If you guys want to know where to pick one of these up, I'll let you know. Just um, message me and I'll put you in contact with the guy that's importing these. He's also importing all the Peak UK gear. Or if you've got any comments or questions about this paddle, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them for you because I have really been putting it through its paces over the past month and a half, almost two months now, from slicey boating, downriver, freestyle, to like play holes, X, I mean, you name it, creek boating, racing, I put it through pretty much everything I can. Yeah, um, I still use my Letman. I get questions on that, so I'll go back and forth between my Letman and my Surge. I just broke a Surge, by the way, but I have I have a backup Surge. I love the Warner Surge for slicey boating and jamming into rocks and all kinds of stuff. You do not want to treat this bait. You, do, you don't want to beat on this paddle. You want to take care of it. <laughs> this is one of these that when you buy it, you want to just take care of it. So yeah, if you guys have any experience with these or have any experience with G Power, let me know. I always like hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for watching, and um, I will uh, see you guys on the water. Yeah, let's um, let's get this. Hopefully, we're gonna get some rain, and we can do some creaking. Let's go do some axe creaking. Yeah. Whew.